I had a clip recommended to me on YouTube recently where Dave Rubin was talking with Jordan Peterson and he asked him whether in his time as a practicing therapist, he'd ever met someone who had switched from gay to straight or degayed, as Rubin puts it. Did you ever meet a gay man who successfully degayed and then went on to live a, a completely functioning life? No. Now, Peterson said no to that question. He'd never seen anyone de-gay in his time as a therapist. But what interested me was the comments on this video. Longtime channel followers will know that I've been putting forward a theory for many years now, which I guess I would call the trauma theory, that homosexuality is caused by psychological scarring and emotional trauma, particularly in developmental years. And I've tested this theory on this channel in the past by looking into the backgrounds of gay celebrities and looking to see if there was an obvious trauma that would explain their sexuality breaking and it turned out to be the case we looked into Elton John and discovered that he was abandoned by his father as a child and he missed that masculine love from a father which then became sexualized as he grew up Ellen DeGeneres and Rosie O'Donnell were sexually abused by their stepfather and father respectively and therefore they grew to fear and hate men you could easily say Tom Daly lost his father. Graham Norton was bullied by other boys. And it's the same for George Takai. He was molested. Ricky Martin molested. So it's very easy to identify traumas that would have an effect on sexuality as someone grows up. And what I found interesting was that on the comment section of this video, many people affirmed this theory. Now, admittedly, this is just anecdotal evidence. This isn't scientific. But I was struck by how many people were confirming this theory from personal experience, whether to say that they were once gay and are now straight or they knew someone who was gay and is now straight. So firstly, a lot of people wrote to say that actually you can be gay. Quite a few people mentioned Beckett Cook, who did indeed give up the lifestyle and has spoken openly about it. Apparently he's even got a YouTube channel where he speaks about this. I've not been on it, but quite a few people mentioned this. Another mentioned Christopher Jan, another Dennis Jernigan, another Cy Rogers, another Joseph Nicolosi. I don't know any of these people, but so many people mentioned them that they must be prominent examples of people who were once gay but are now straight. One person wrote, me, I'm an example. One said, I know several gay people, one girl and one guy, both gay for a decade. The girl stated she was straight after a decade and the guy got married and is so deep in love with his wife. One said, my uncle was openly gay for 30 years. He then had a personal encounter with God and has been transformed from his previous life. He married a woman 13 years ago, still very happily married. Another said, I was till Jesus came into my life and it's been five years now. Another wrote, I know a gay man who successfully degayed. He's now married to a woman and has two children. He describes it as being like a recovered alcoholic. One wrote, yes, I have seen that happen and they are so much happier in life. One said, I do. Robert Oscar Lopez, he was gay, then came out as bisexual and then straight. He is married with two kids. There were just lots and lots of these stories. Someone else wrote, there are so many testimonials of people degaying, which is right. I can think of many more myself, like Jackie Hill Perry, for example. Many examples. Another said, hey, over here, I'm one. I did some things that I never do now. And no, I wasn't just curious. I was definitely gay for a while, but our Lord Jesus Christ showed me the truth. I don't understand why anyone would continue to pretend that this doesn't happen or that it's impossible when there are so many people lining up to give personal testimonies that they were once gay, they now aren't, and they're glad not to be. They report that they feel that they've been released from something. They feel better for it. They feel happier, more at peace, more content. Actually, I do know why people would pretend that this doesn't happen because it doesn't suit a particular narrative. But the quicker we establish that this is an absolute fact, an indisputable fact that people can be gay, they can be gay and then be straight again, the quicker we can all make progress on this, the quicker we can have more productive discussions on this, and the quicker we can come to some sort of positive solution on this topic. However, the really interesting thing to me about this video was how many of these comments affirmed the trauma theory that I've been talking about for so long on this channel. This is what really caught my attention about this video, and it's why I wanted to talk about it and do an update on this topic. One wrote, Online conversion therapy actually worked for me. My parents forced me and I was like, okay, I can't change. But then we did image therapy on trauma and my feelings eventually went towards women only. One wrote, most people are easily swayed and confused, especially when there's an early incident of abuse 
of the sexual sort. Another wrote, I suppose you would have to leave the trauma of childhood molestation behind to do it successfully. I thought this one was interesting. Remember how I did a video recently called The Monopoly Effect? And the premise of that video was that it seems that hurting people want to hurt others in the same place that they were hurt. Even if it's like a subconscious thing, just an instinct. We seem to see this happening quite a lot. Well, this one writes, I've heard from many straight men about getting approached by very persistent gay men for a hookup. It's bizarre how they only want straight men. So I called this the monopoly effect. I should probably think of a different name for it actually than that because I don't think it quite captures what I'm trying to say. But it's just this idea that I was broken in this place, so now I have this instinct, even a subconscious instinct, to want to try to break others in that same place. And I connected it to drag queens and their desire for uh, getting close to children as well. I thought this one was also interesting. This one wrote, I've known both males and females who thought they were gay, who got therapy for other things they considered emotional health issues, and ended up realizing they were not gay. They were just trying to find the kind of comfort they needed in a way that scared them less than other ways. All of them had been molested by at least one man when they were very young, some multiple men, some a man plus a woman, or more than one woman, or multiple people of both sexes. I have never known anyone who is a homosexual who has not been molested or raped before they felt this was their state of being. So yeah, this is all anecdotal, but I thought it was just interesting that other people have noticed the connection between trauma and homosexuality. When I investigated the 10 gay celebrities for that original video many years ago, I realized I was having to rely on these celebrities having gone public with their trauma stories. Otherwise you would just never know. For example, Neil Patrick Harris, I couldn't find anything on him but maybe he's just never talked about it. Maybe it's happened, but he's just never gone public. Likewise, when I originally looked into Rosie O'Donnell's past, she hadn't yet gone public with the fact that her father had abused her. She only admitted that in 2019, which was after the original video. But when I saw that story, I thought, ah, okay, you as well. I didn't know that at the time. So I find this interesting that these are the experiences of regular people who are coming across this phenomenon in their daily lives in the towns and cities and suburbs of the world. They're coming across this phenomenon and they're coming to the same conclusion that there's a link here between trauma and homosexuality. And once we establish that that's the case, it should inform how we approach this topic going forward. I think it's also interesting to note how many people point to Jesus as being the key to their liberation. I don't think that should go unnoticed, that Jesus is very often mentioned and he's the key to liberation on this.